Hi viewers, in this edition of Historic Flying Machine, we focus on the V-2 rockets, which was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. Also known as A-4 rocket, it was built by Germany as an alternative to super-long-range artillery, which the Treaty of Versailles prohibited after the World War I. V-2 rocket was one of the greatest technological achievements of this century and helped to build the technological base for human spaceflight and advanced strategic missiles. Both the US and Soviet Russian space program and missiles had a direct origin from V-2 rocket to a certain extent. The V-2 rocket used a 74% ethanol water mixture for fuel and liquid oxygen for oxidizer. At launch, the V-2 propelled itself to up to 65 seconds on its own power. After reaching a desired speed, an accelerometer-based system would cut the engine, after which the rocket would continue on its ballistic freefall trajectory. The advanced gyroscope-based guidance system maintained its stability and path. The rocket rose to an altitude of 52 to 60 miles and had a range of 200 to 225 miles with a top speed of around 3,400 miles per hour. A fully loaded rocket weighed 12,700 kgs. Designed by the rocket pioneer Werner von Braun, the V-2 was a breakthrough in missile technology. It all started when von Braun was working on his doctorate thesis titled construction, theoretical and experimental solution to the problem of the liquid propellant rocket. Around the same period, the German army became interested in rockets as a replacement for its Paris gun. The Paris gun was a long-range cannon which was specifically banned under the Versailles Treaty after World War I. General Walter Donberger, who headed the new rocket development program, was impressed by von Braun's research and asked him to work under him. Von Braun worked there from 1932. After years of development and testing, by late 1941, they possessed the four key technologies essential to the success of V-2 rocket. These were large liquid fuel rocket engine, supersonic aerodynamics, gyroscopic guidance, and rudders in jet control. On 3rd October 1942, the first successful flight of V-2 happened. Hitler was never really impressed with this V-2 rocket until the final development happened. But on the day of first successful V-2 launch, Hitler was really impressed with what he saw and apologized to General Donberger for not believing in his efforts. The V-2 carried an explosive warhead weighing approximately one ton that was capable of flattening a city block. The Allied forces couldn't do much against the V-2 rockets. It was too fast and flew too high. Since the V-2 arrived at several times the speed of sound, there could be no warning to its approach. The missile impacted before the sonic boom they created was heard. Allied efforts to prevent the rocket attacks depended on bombing production facilities and attacking rail transit with fighter jets. Another notable method was used by the British intelligence to counter the V-2 rocket attacks. They sent false reports implying that the rockets were overshooting their London target by 10 to 20 miles. This tactic worked. More than half of the V-2s aimed at London landed outside the London Civic Defence region. Most landed on less heavily populated areas in Kent due to erroneous recalibration. Germany produced 6,000 V-2s. The V-2 rocket was inaccurate and could only be aimed at large areas like a city. In an average, the V-2 missed their aim point by more than 9 miles. The first operational V-2 launch took place in September 8, 1944 and the last on March 30, 1945. During this 7-month period, 1,115 V-2s hit England and 1,524 fell on continental Europe, mostly in Belgium. Though the rocket was an effective terror device killing almost 9,000 people, more people, that is more than 12,000 slave workers, died making them in the underground German facility. These facts 
obtained the image of what otherwise would be considered a monumental technological achievement. Alright viewers, thank you for watching this video. Do subscribe to my channel for more aerospace videos. And don't forget to comment what you think about this historic